All right, we've got our inspirations. I'm going to add that little inspiration here of the breakfast cereals. But remember, inspirations aren't required, but your sketch is. So as soon as you have a sketch, no matter how loose it is, go ahead and add it into Canvas. So you've got a, a placeholder for the assignment already. So there's my sketch, but now I'm going to use Photopea to play with it, clean it up. So the first thing I can do using my compositing knowledge, I'll make a duplicate, is I go to Image Adjustments, and I'm going to play with Levels, and I'm going to brighten it up. And I'm going to darken the darks. And when I started out as an illustrator right out of, actually during college, started to do editorial cartoons in the mid-90s for newspapers, editorial cartoons are traditionally inked and then published on newsprint, right? But I was tentative, as many students are, and I knew I could draw well with pencil, but I hated having to commit that to ink. So I would just take my pencils, scan them into Photoshop, and then spend a long time like using the eraser and darkening them and making them look like ink. All because I was too chicken shit to actually just ink the thing, right? Because inking is out of control. And it took me maybe like four hours to do every cartoon, but once I learned to kind of trust the process and do digital inking, it would took me only an hour and you get paid the same either way so it's better to use the tools in a more efficient way but i don't regret it because it it taught me all that right we we learn from all the things we do so i could spend a lot of time trying to clean this up and turn this into line art but it's going to have some major drawbacks because it comes from pencil and it comes from a scan or a photograph rather than being made digitally. And I'm going to point out some of those drawbacks right now. So first of all, it's got all this these kind of stray marks from the scanner bed or from the paper that I'm having to fill in with white or erase. And then there's a lot of them. And then no matter what I do, a pencil line is made of shards of graphite, like little ribbons of metal that get pushed into paper. And even when you play with the adjustment layers and you make it light and you make it dark and you clean up the edges like this for all those stray little fragments of pencil that smudge the edges. Edit fill. Come on. you still get these kind of stair-step pixels with a lot of variation. So instead, we want to change this into clean line art. But before we start inking it digitally, we want to make sure that it's a resolution we like. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take the canvas size, because this is pretty close cropped, and I'm going to make it bigger. Just grow around all the edges. Remember, what's one thing that raster programs are good at? good at growing out from the middle. So I'm going to make it 2,000 by 2,000 pixels. Then I'm going to flatten it, layer flatten. Then I'm going to go to image size and I'm going to check the resolution. So right now this is 27 inches by 27 inches by 72 pixels per inch. That was, that was just the, set, the setting on the scanner. I'm going to change that, resample it, to be 350 pixels per inch by something that's closer to 10 by 10 inches. Then hit OK. Because that's a good resolution for inking, for raster digital inking. The next step I'm going to do, now that I'm at a high enough resolution, around 300 or, or 3,500 pixels by 3,500 pixels, 3,500 by 3,500. Then I'm going to make a new layer on top of it. I'm going to fill that layer with white, edit fill white. And then I'm going to take the opacity down on that to about 60%. This is onion skinning. It's like putting a piece of tracing paper over the top of my pencil sketch. 
And then I'm going to lock both of these layers. So I can't accidentally ink on them. And then I'm going to make a new layer. And I'm going to call this my digital ink layer. And for this, I'm going to use the default black, the 100% black, all the way on the very bottom corner of your color selector. And I'm going to use the brush tool. And I'm going to use my, my tablet and my stylus. And we've only done this a little bit before. But what I'm going to do is set my brush to be a size that I think is good, which is usually, I set it to about the size of a pencil eraser. And then set the opacity to 100, set the flow to 100, set the smooth to around 60 for a cartoon character like this, and then set it to be pressure sensitive, all in the tool settings. That way, now I can test out my ink. I can make lines that are thin, and I can make lines that are thick all with the same brush setting. And I can make lines that go start thin and end up thick. And because I have that smooth setting, it's going to give me those nice curves. The problem is, once I start doing that, I'm stuck with the proportions of my sketch. So why not use the advantages of digital and make a duplicate of my sketch, now that I've got some room, and hit Option-Command-T in PhotoP, and start playing with distort and warp and skew and see if you can get to some proportions you might like a little bit more that maybe feel a little bit more original than what you first came up with in your sketch. So I can make that head a lot bigger if I want to and the body smaller. I can play with the arrangement of things. And I did it as a duplicate so I can compare that to what it was before. And I think I want something in between these two. So I'll make another duplicate. And then I'll hit Option Command T. Because often by playing with it, you'll discover what, what you like more and what you like less. So I'm going to keep using Distort. Then I'm going to use warp. And if I wanted to really have fine tune control, I could erase this background from it, cut it out, and then use puppet warp to really kind of tweak its proportions. So I'll show you what that might look like. I might just use my lasso and roughly cut it out like a sticker already. I don't need to be too refined, it's just my sketch. And then duplicate that. Come on, catch up with me. And then go to Edit Puppet Warp. And then I can set anchor points, and I can push and pull certain areas of my sketch, especially for figurative, like character-based work. This can be very helpful. Then hit return, and then compare that to what I had before. Option Command T, grow it a little bit. Yeah, and I think I like that. I think that just has a little bit more personality than my initial sketch. I don't know. What do you guys think? This one or this one? Because you want to decide before you start inking. I just need Photo P to catch up. And then this one or this one. So this one, more or less. Right? Why not? All right. So I'll do one last critique of this. I think the hand got a little distorted, so I'm just going to use my compositing skills again. Easy while it's digital inking. 
And I'm just going to sort that piece and duplicate it. And then Option Command T with Shift, transform this, make it a little bit smaller, and distort just that piece of it. All right, and then I just have to fill in this little area here. So lots of ways to get to your sketch. One way to get to your sketch is also with compositing. So what if I wanted him to be like holding something? I don't have to draw that in necessarily. If I want him to be holding a knife, right? I could composite in line art of a knife. So I could download. This is a PNG combat survival knife. I can get it from Pixlr, I can get it from anywhere. Then I can bring it in, I can do it from Google Draw, right? And then I can put that in his hand. And then just erase away from where it needs to be erased, erased away from. So it's going between his thumb. You can see a little bit of the handle, but not all of it and his fingers. So that might be a little intense for a, a serial, you know, but you can use whatever skills you want to get to your line art because you're going to be digitally inking all of it. So if you don't feel confident drawing something, you can always composite it. And then I'm going to be really picky because I'm going to spend some time working on this line art. So these fingers, I just need to work with a little bit. So I'm going to duplicate them and then Option Command T, transform these on their own. And just make those a little bit plumper. All right, now I've got my sketch, and I like it better than what I did with pencil. So now I'm going to flatten this, and I'm going to set it up the same way to digitally ink it. So before you start digitally inking, don't rush to it. Make sure you like the proportions of your sketch. Make sure you've played with it in some different ways using transform. And then make a new layer on top of it. Fill that with white. This really helps. Set that white layer on top to about 60% opacity. Onion skinning, like tracing paper. Lock your sketch and that onion skin layer. And then make a new layer on top and call it digital ink. Then you go to your brush and you set your brush to be normal mode, opacity 100%, flow 100%, smooth, whatever you think. I'm going to try around 60. And then if you want it to be pressure sensitive, which I do for my cartoon character, cereal box kind of gestural thick and thin lines, I'm going to keep pressure sensitivity on. If I want it to be more animated and technical, I'm going to use a thinner line and I'm always going to use the same width. So you can decide whether you want a, a gestural line or a, a technical line. And now I'm ready to start inking it. So how do I do this? I can zoom in. I can use the rotate view hand tool if I want to set it at a slightly easier angle because there's a whole lot of curves in this. And then I just go to my black pen and this is with the technical line. 
and it's doing all that smoothing for me 